We are recording. Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to the penultimate episode of Create Together Season 2. If you haven't been with us from the start, the show is about people from all over the world collaborating on creative projects, sharing stories, making stuff together. All the art and the music you're about to see was made by members of our audience, just like you, who came to hit record, found a project that inspired them, and got involved. And even though there's only one episode left, there's still time to be a part of it. We're still making next week's episode right now, so if you have some time this week and you feel like being creative together with some other people, come and collaborate with us. I promise you'll have fun. I'm walking on a beach. So our theme this season is nature, and I know you might think that means, oh, we're gonna make all kinds of pretty art about sunsets and flowers and butterflies and things, but today I wanna talk about fungus, which I know can be kind of gross, but it turns out it's actually really useful. We talked to these two mycologists or scientists, experts on fungus and many different kinds of fungus, fungi, it's pronounced fungi, and it turns out fungi can actually be really useful in solving some of the world's biggest environmental problems. Watch this. Hello friends, my name is Juliana Furci. I am a mycologist in Santiago, Chile. My name is Peter McCoy, and I'm an artist, author, and educator focused on all things fungi. So what makes fungi so special? <laughs> fungi are not plants, and neither are they animals. They're not bacteria, and they're not a virus. Fungi are organisms that can form a kingdom of their own. Fungi obtain their energy through absorption. They secrete enzymes that digest their food outside their body and then they suck that food back up. The way their cell is and the way they get their energy defines them in this group of organisms. We're talking about molds, mushrooms, lichens, Conks, yeasts are fungi. So without fungi, there's no bread, no chocolate, no wine, no beer. Fungi connect plants to animals. For example, herbivores can't digest the plants they eat by themselves because the animals can't break down the cell wall of the plant. And so animals team with fungi in their gut and the fungi decompose the plants for us. So they're extremely fundamental to enable life, but at the same time, fungi are the recyclers of nature. Some of the most exciting research that I've been involved in and continue to work on is in the realm of mycoremediation, which is the ability of fungi to break down pollutants in the environment, whether that's plastics, uh, oil spills, pesticides, you name it, it seems like there might very well be a fungus that can tackle that problem. So years ago, I asked myself, could a fungus break down the chemicals inside of cigarette filters? I tried one species, the famous oyster mushroom, and sure enough, it ran right through them. There's also the ability for fungi to deal with things like lead, mercury, arsenic, and even radioactive compounds like cesium, which was released during the Fukushima spill. These are just some of the starting places for microremediation. So a time might come in the future when recycling facilities take all of our plastic waste and feed it to fungi and make it something new. Hey everyone, today I'll be playing you a little rock beat here in uh, my mom's garden. Let's hope she doesn't kill me. Two, three, four.
So when we decided the theme of this season was gonna be nature, I knew we were probably gonna make a certain amount of art about how humans are impacting nature, right? But as I was thinking about it, I realized we're sort of making a distinction here where humans are this and nature is that, as if, you know, we are impacting nature, but we're not part of it ourselves. So I wanted to ask a scientist about this. And in this next piece, we found a scientist. She's a world-renowned forest ecologist. Her name is Dr. Suzanne Simard, and we asked her this question. When did we start thinking of ourselves as separate from nature? I'm Suzanne Simard. I teach forest ecology at the University of British Columbia, which is in Vancouver. As a forest ecologist, I've been watching forests my whole life. We have a long history of living in forests and other ecosystems. But about 2,000 years ago, our philosophies, especially European philosophies, have shifted to where we've started to view ourselves as quite separate and superior from nature. And that separation has had huge impacts on how we view and exploit forests and other kinds of ecosystems. And slowly over time, and really picking up in the last 150 years as our population has increased, we're seeing some pretty negative effects of that. As we change our forests and other ecosystems into other land uses, for example, urban development or agriculture or mining or oil and gas development, we're having ripple effects that affect global cycles. And this is directly caused by how we view ourselves as separate from nature. The trick is for us to figure out, you know, what is a healthy relationship between us and the forest. There's a secret that I've discovered that will show us the way to solve these problems. And that is the discovery that mother trees connect the forest. Mother trees are these old trees that connect the trees together in a forest, like a complex network. These old trees, old being like a hundred or more years, sometimes they can be 5,000 years old, were the most highly connected to other trees through these fungal networks, these fungal highways of mycorrhizal fungi. They send micronutrients, they send water, and so this helps the forest grow more and better and makes a much more productive ecosystem. They actually subsidize seedlings with carbon and water and nutrients. They feed them, basically. They collaborate. You know, they, they work with the trees and the fungi and the bacteria to create a diverse, healthy, productive forest. We never knew that the forest was completely connected below ground and that these mother trees were like the center. Mother trees can teach us so many things. We've evolved in these ecosystems as well. We're completely interdependent with our forests and the entire global ecosystem. For example, most of the water in the world actually originates in forests. In Canada, where I live, 80% of our fresh water comes from forests. So without forests, you know, we wouldn't be here. You know, historically, Aboriginal cultures around the world lived with the land, dependent on the land, knew their place in the land. And as a result, you know, resources were in abundance um, you know, because they nurtured them, they cultivated them, they, they respected them. But we have, through our consumptive processes and combination with all of our fellow human beings, driven the place out of balance. Like mother trees, we've got to get back to balance with our biosphere. Humans have the potential to completely transform our environment in positive ways. We all think that humans are just negative forces, but we're not. We can have the completely the opposite productive force as well. Collaboration is the most important interaction that we have with each other. In nature and evolution, um, scientists have figured that out. Darwin recognized that collaboration and symbioses where, you know, organisms help each other was absolutely crucial to the evolution, the co-evolution of creatures. And so that crosses over into our social connections too. Collaboration is that magical thing that allows us to create emergent things like health and symphonies and uh, mindfulness and love, all these amazing things that you can't quite dissect and say, that's how it works, but it's actually essential. 
If we collaborate, work together, we can actually, you know, build a society that is more productive, more diverse, um, more beautiful than ever. My name is Dina and I live in Minnesota. I contributed a mother tree animation. I decided to take photos of leaves that everybody else around the world contributed and then incorporating it into the animation itself to give it a more realistic texture. Hey guys, my name is Sophia. I'm from the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. And my leaf came from a baby coconut tree. I live in Taiwan and the leaf I contributed came from a tea tree. I live in the UK and the leaf I contributed came from a maple tree. And this is an oak leaf. It's from the pin oak tree and this is what it looks like. For the animation, I went out and recorded a lot of videos of how a tree moves or how leaves move or how they fall. I spent 30 minutes to an hour to just watch how a grass moves in the wind, just for the reference. I felt like this was the perfect animation to contribute to the project with all these other talented artists around the world. I love the idea that collaboration is something we get from the natural world, that we're all somehow instinctively collaborative on a kind of biological level. That feels really real and awesome. That's what this whole show is about. That's what Hit Record is about. I want to say thank you to Dr. Samard for sharing her discoveries with us. And of course, I want to thank our intrepid mycologists, the fungi scientists, Juliana Furici and Peter McCoy. Next week is sadly our last episode this season, but there is still time to get involved. We're working hard on a grand finale. There's gonna be a big music video, lots of other fun stuff. So come to Hit Record, be a part of it. Thanks to YouTube Originals for supporting our community. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our final episode of the season. I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Again, my heart.